Okay, we're going to cover basic operation for the smart, the Sharp Equus Smart Board. Um, we'll start with the basic software installation. In your package comes two CDs. Some of you may have gotten one CD if you have the newer boards. You'll install them on the laptop computer. Once they're installed, you'll have three icons that'll pop up on your desktop. They'll say touch display link, pen software, and overlay mode. Um, after those are installed, then you can begin to set up the computer for yourself. You want to start by installing Google Chrome onto your computer. So all you have to do is open up, it'll show Internet Explorer, go into Internet Explorer, go to Google Chrome. Once you have Google Chrome installed on the, in the computer, um, set up a Gmail account for the individual smart board computer. This computer here is at Hardest Clear Lake. So the account is listed as, hard, as Hardest Clear Lake Smart Board at gmail.com. You can have a, the same password that you use to log into the computer desktop itself. Once you've established that, then you can start to install apps. To install apps, in the bottom of your toolbar, there will be an icon that looks like a shopping bag. If it doesn't appear in your toolbar, go over to your Windows button and open up the uh, Windows apps and programs list. If you scroll down, it will come up with the store. To install a program, go to the store. You can search for, let's, let's start with games. So games that you're going to install, you want to ensure that you're not installing games that have childlike graphics. Some of them will be a little more on the childlike, but you do not want to have anything that looks overtly for, like it's designed for preschoolers. So to install one of the games, let's go down to the free games. There's so much available in the free section that you really don't need to pay for games for your smart boards. You can scan down. And let's go to, let's see, let's install tap tiles. Open up the game before you install it and just look and see what, how to play the game and if you think your residents would be able to play it. So this one is similar to Mejong. This one's a 3D. It may be confusing for the residents. So we're going to go down and find another one that might be easier. Block Slider is an arcade game. This one has pretty good graphics. So we're going to grab that one. While it's downloading, you can see the progress by clicking on that. Starting the download. When it's finished downloading, when it's finished downloading, and you can download several at once. You don't have to just do one at a time and then move them to the desktop. You can do a lot of them at once. So after everything's downloaded, when you click on your Windows button, it pulls up a list. At the top of the list has the recently added. So at the top of the list is the Block Slider, Candy Crush, and Facebook. So we want to move these applications onto the desktop to make it easier for the staff and the residents to navigate. The way you do that is to go take your mouse, click on it, grab it, drag it to the desktop. Now when you're installing games and items onto your desktop, a good rule of thumb to make it easy for people to find them is to put them in an order on the desktop, grouping them together by the type of games or the type of applications you have. I am gonna, I'll put Facebook up here for you too. The next thing you're going to do if you want to install programs from a flash drive on your computer 
is to take your flash drive and plug it in to the port on the side of the computer. Go down to your folder at the bottom that has your files. And now this has pulled up the items on the flash drive. You use the same thing that you did with the Windows um, app list. When you want to install something onto your desktop, you'll grab it with your mouse, drag it, copy it over onto your desktop. And it'll ask if you want to copy here, just click copy here and it'll install it on your desktop. And that's how you easily install software, um, applications, and documents. Um, as well as other programs onto your smart board to begin using it. Um, it's very easy to use once you get to that point. So for example, let's, I'm going to show you what it looks like with a PowerPoint. So PowerPoint presentations, you can load whole folders onto your desktop, whether it's a lifelong learning PowerPoint or a game. For most of the computers, they do not have Office installed on them. So when you open them up, you're going to see this screen that says, let's get started. It asks you if you're going to try it, buy it, or activate. Just hit the X, and it'll allow you to go ahead and use the PowerPoint. But you cannot alter the PowerPoints at all from this computer. In order to alter them, you'll have to alter them on another computer, and then either email them or put them on a flash drive and reinstall. So to navigate a PowerPoint, Hit the slideshow button at the top from the beginning. It's very easy to navigate when you get to this point. You just use your finger and swipe. You can swipe through it. If you're making PowerPoint games for your residents, make sure that you're putting a black background with white or red letters. Red letters I would only use on the answer slides. It's much easier for the residents to see for gameplay. So once you're done, you um, hit the X at the bottom, and when you come to the side, it'll pull up a series of other icons. There's a highlighter icon where you can highlight different items on your PowerPoint if you want. The other one is a split screen that will hide the slide you're working on. The last one down is the exit, where you can exit it and go back out to the beginning. The other operations that you can do are playing games on the, the smart board. So to play any of the games, let's pull up, see if Candy Crush will open. So Candy Crush is a game that a lot of people play on their phones. Um, it's very easy for caregivers to get started playing with residents. However, if they're playing the game with the resident, they can't just leave the resident and walk away. They have to ensure they are having interaction with the residents. So it, it works just like an iPad or your touch screens on your smartphones. Once you have the games loaded up, to make them big screen for ease of use, just hit the increase screen and it'll make it full screen to nap for the residents to be able to see it and easier play. The first time you sign in to some of these activity games and apps, there'll be a terms of service agreement. You only have to go through it once. so minimize the sound. Easy to play, just like you do on your phone, just touch and move. Now residents will often um, be hesitant to touch the screen, but if they see you doing it and you encourage them and work with them, they'll be more likely to touch it and interact with it. Very easy to do. The other application I want to show you is the PIN software. 
So the pen software, um, there's two forms of it, the pen and then the overlay mode for the pen. So to open up the pen software, you simply click on it, and I have it open, and it's going to pull up a digital whiteboard. So the digital whiteboard has a pen that goes with it. Let me grab the pen. It has a pen that goes with it and a special eraser. So you simply take the pen and write on the board. You can also use your finger and write on the board. It is a little harder to use your finger writing on the board. But if you have residents that have trouble holding the pen, the best option is to use the finger to navigate the board. There's a little pin icon in a square on the side of the board. If you click on it, it gives you options for pens. You have a black, a red, or a blue pen. You can click on the pins. If you double click on it, it pulls up options. You can have your pen look like a regular pen. You can switch over to the brush, which if you look clearly at the lines, the lines are a little fuzzier with the brush. You can use as a highlighter or use as a figure. You can change the width of your pen. Oops. You can make what am I doing? You can make thicker lines. And then to erase, you simply take your eraser and go over the screen. And then you can start over. Now, say you have multiple screens up, or you want to add a screen. You simply have to go to the bottom icon over here on the left hand, uh, the right hand side. The fourth one over looks like a series of four boxes. If you click on it, it'll open up a box that says overlay mode and whiteboard. They have plus marks in them. If you press the plus mark, it'll open up a new screen. Go back to the blank one. You simply go click on that same icon again, and now I'm back to the other screen. Close that. Very easy to navigate. There's an icon here that is, looks like two tools crossed over. This is your settings icon. Everything should already be set up for you. There's no need to change any of it. You do have want to make sure that your dual touch gesture is enabled so you can use either the pen or the fingers to set it up. You can change the size of your screen. Simply um, the second one over from the X is a square. You can make it smaller or full screen. And to exit, all you do is press the X. It's going to pull up a box that says, are you sure you want to exit this program? And you can exit without saving. And since I had two screens open, I've got to close both of them. The next thing I want to show you is the pin software that is the overlay mode. You click on the overlay pin software mode. And now the same software that you had the whiteboard on is now up here on the screen. It's invisible because it's an overlay. You can go to the internet underneath it. I'll give it a minute to start up. So once you're here at this, at this area, you can click back on your pen software. Now you're able to write on top of websites. You can't navigate anywhere on the internet. You have to minimize it back down. And let's say we're going to go over here to, let's go to YouTube. So you could go to YouTube, click on your icon at the bottom again for your pen software and it'll pop back up. 
And now you can make notes on websites. You can underline things on websites. You can change your pen. Whoops. You can change your pen to the highlighter. And then you can come over here and highlight Katy Perry's name. And I didn't make my pen very big. But you can highlight different things on your website. Um, this is particularly helpful when you're working with residents um, during lifelong learning education sessions. Um, you can also allow the nursing staff and your executive director to use the smart boards for trainings um, and education sessions that they may offer to your staff or families or even outside vendor partners. Oops. To get out of it, all you have to do is go down to the X in the bottom right hand corner, exit without saving, and now I'm just back up on YouTube. When you set up your um, account on Gmail for your, your computer, you will also have access to setting up a YouTube account. So YouTube is very helpful to use for um, music, short educational videos, relaxation, um, any lifelong learning or how-to videos you can find all over um, the YouTube. Once you get your email established, you can go over to YouTube and sign in to your Gmail account on YouTube and it will add you as a subscriber account on here. Once you do that, you can go into the search and find different things that you can install into a library. In order to access your library from the home page of YouTube, simply click on the three uh, lines next to the YouTube icon on the left. If it's not open, it'll open up for you. You can go down to the library tab, click on library, and this is all of the items that are saved on this smart board right now. In order to add an item, go up to search, and let's say we want to add something about John Wayne. Type in John Wayne. 